Today, I'm going to start with some special guests. This is Mary in the red and Katie in the blue. Who does Mama work for? That's out. Yeah, and what are we trying to do? Who are we trying to stop? Donald Trump. And why do we want to stop Donald Trump? Because he's, he's bad. bad. Yeah. <laughs> you guys look like I look programmed little robots. I told them about the fish. And a lot of people tuned in to give us advice. But what happened to Blueberry? He got a, um, a disease. disease. Yeah, ick disease, right? Mm -hmm. Ugh, blueberry. All right, RIP. Mm -hmm. Hey everyone, it's Jen O'Malley Dillon. It's October, a great time of year and a whole new quarter, uh, but really wanted to first just say thank you to so many of our supporters who helped us reach and exceed our $750,000 goal. Many of you tuned in to our goal poll that Rob Flaherty uh, was, was showing. A few additional highlights. Last week, Betta was in Erie and Pittsburgh and Ohio. Before that was in Chicago and Indiana. One of the things that Betta loves best about his work is being able to be out there on the campaign trail, meeting new people, being with students, um, really great events. I think I mentioned last week at Kent State and OSU. Beto just wrapped up a trip in Las Vegas where he participated uh, in a forum on uh, gun reform. There's never been a forum in a presidential race on what we need to do on gun reform. We are actually the only campaign with a plan though since some other candidates have come out and support, but a plan that supports, bless you, um, mandatory buybacks uh, of weapons of war. An assault weapon ban is very, very important and we need to have it, but that only takes weapons of war off the streets in the future. It does nothing for weapons of war that are currently out there. And I think there's 15 or 16 million. A peace plan for a safer America by March for Our Lives. There is a section in here um, that asks for a federal ban on assault weapons and high capacity magazines, as well as a national gun buyback and disposal program. We are the only ones, not only to have a plan for the buyback, but the only ones to sign this pledge. We have a weekend of action coming up um, where people all across the country are gonna be uh, engaging in the community, talking about our policy, talking about having conversations about what we need to do on guns. Check out uh, betterallwork.com, you'll get all the details there. This is where Mama takes a break to figure out what she needs to say next. Beto is in LA uh, over the weekend. He's gonna be participating uh, in the SEIU uh, forum to talk about the importance of workers and worker rights. Also gonna be doing some events in East LA. And then he's gonna be making his trip back to El Paso through Arizona, a state we've not actually been. We'll be in Tucson, we'll be in Phoenix. We're also gonna be talking about impeachment and I'm sure that if you exist on this planet, you are also talking about impeachment. Every day it just seems like a, a whole new level of, uh, oh my God, the information that's coming out from emails and texts, Trump basically telling everyone uh, that he asked foreign governments to interfere with our elections. You know, you saw Beto as a leader on impeachment 2017, talked about it here in Texas in the Senate race. Fast forward to now, he's also the first person that uh, was calling on not even just waiting for impeachment, but for uh, Trump to resign. With that, let us go to the white bowl of questions. What's one place you'd like to see Team Beto go? We are pretty unique when it comes to our campaign and uh, where we travel. We're also going to places that very few presidential candidates go. We can't be a president for everyone if we don't show up for everyone. Beto promised we'd go to Wyoming, so we're gonna work on that. And a um, really important trip to Puerto Rico, we're planning showing up in places where people are like, wow, I can't believe someone came to ask my opinion. That's really at the heart of how we think about this campaign, but also how Beto thinks about governing. So awesome question. Do you guys wanna pick this question? Mix it up. Do the campaign managers, campaign managers talk to each other? And what are those conversations like? As a woman uh, and a mom and a woman campaign manager, this has not always been a business that was as friendly to women or as friendly to moms in particular. There is this amazing network of women um, who I look up to, who are mentors, who are friends, um, who are on other campaigns and who we often are connecting with. There's real camaraderie, and in particular, I think for women, this is an incredible network. The campaign managers that are leading these campaigns are so talented and awesome. Some of them I've had the chance to work with over the years in campaigns. I call friends. One more. Mary, you wanna do it? All right, Mary, come on over. Fairness is everything with twins. You don't have to close your eyes, you can't see. How worried should I be 
um, about us qualifying for the next debate. There's a lot of things to be worried about in the world and qualifying for the debates is not something that you need to carry on your shoulders. We qualified by the number of donors. We qualified with one poll. We need three more polls and I am really confident that we're gonna get there. Before the cutoff, we had three or four polls that had us reach the threshold already. We're gonna be on that debate stage before we even get there, we're gonna kick ass, excuse my language girls, on the October debate stage. Don't worry, we got this one. You guys are awesome. I love doing this. I love getting your feedback. I really want to shout out to everyone, a couple um, folks online who were super helpful in the fish situation. Keep your questions coming. Excited to keep answering them and be on the lookout for some big campaign updates in the next week. Uh, and we'll be back. So we'll see you out there. Thanks, everyone.